Hi, my name is Wade. I'm a paramedic and I'm a lead EMT instructor for Idaho Medical Academy. Today we'll be talking about some alternative stroke assessments you can do. Strokes are the fifth leading cause of death and the leading cause of disability in the United States. Time is of the essence when it comes to strokes, so being able to identify them quickly is critical. The Cincinnati Stroke Assessment, or FAST, is the ideal method of identifying a stroke, but there are often circumstances that make it difficult to perform the traditional FAST assessment. Patients may not want to smile or show their teeth. Some patients may not have teeth to begin with. This video will show you some alternative options for assessing a stroke if the patient is unable to perform or is uncompliant with the traditional stroke assessment. These other assessment tools can be used when findings from the traditional assessment are inconclusive or to help cement your decision to activate stroke protocols. In the FAST assessment, the first thing that we check for is facial droop. We are looking to see if the portion of the brain that affects the cranial nerves is affected, which will cause the patient's facial movements to be asymmetrical. At times, it can be difficult to tell if a patient's face is symmetrical when they are smiling, whether it be due to facial hair, patient's hesitancy to smile, or whatever reason. One option, instead of having the patient smile when checking facial droop, is to feel either side of the patient's cheeks. We're checking for equal sensation. The patient will be able to tell you if it feels similar or different based on their uh, potential stroke symptoms. Another option when assessing for facial symmetry is having the patient puff out their cheeks. If the patient is showing signs of facial droop or asymmetrical smile, they will be unable to puff their cheeks up or at least maintain holding them puffed up. Another option when checking facial symmetry is you can have the patient raise their eyebrows. If the patient is having true signs of facial droop or facial asymmetry, one eyebrow will not raise as high as the other one, giving you positive evidence for potential facial droop. On the flip side of that coin, you can also have the patient furrow their eyebrows, bring their eyebrows down. It would provide a similar response to raising them. If they are having true asymmetrical move movement through their face, the one eyebrow will not be able to furrow down. Another option that you can do is you can have the patient stick out their tongue and move their tongue from side to side. If they are having asymmetrical movement or are unable to move their tongue to one side, it could be another indicator of potential stroke. The second part of the FAST assessment is arm drift. Essentially what we're doing is we're having the patient raise their arms, and if one arm starts to go downward or drift, uh, it can be indicative of a stroke. It can be an asymmetrical sign. Now, sometimes patients are uncompliant, just like with facial droop, so there are some options you can use. You can have the patient grip both two fingers on either side and compare their grip strength. Comparatively to the face, you can also feel each side of the arm and see if there is an abnormal or an asymmetrical sensation happening. Another option you can use is you can have the patient push and pull against your hands with theirs and you can test the strength symmetry that way. Now when we're talking about arm drift, it's not exclusive to arms. Some stroke patients will have deficits into their legs and their feet as well. So if we're talking about that, we would have the patient do things such as push and pull on our hands with their feet, like a gas pedal. We could have them lift their leg. We can touch either side and we can make sure the sensation is similar. Make sure we don't have any asymmetrical or uneven sensation throughout. Can be a sign of a stroke if they are showing any of these signs. The S part of FAST stands for speech. Now normally we would have the patient repeat a phrase, a common phrase, back to us and we would note things such as slurring or inaccurate words. Now this can be difficult when we're talking about alternative, or excuse me, alternative assessments. Um, when we're talking about speech, oftentimes when you walk in the room, pay attention to how they're talking. You might notice things like uh, slurred speech or inappropriate words pretty quickly when you're starting to uh, assess a stroke patient. Other options you can do is you can start looking for things like expressive or receptive aphasia, the inability to understand what you're saying, receptive aphasia, or the inability to say what they really mean, which is expressive aphasia. Uh, one thing you can do to check and help narrow down these uh, aphasias is you can have the patient name three objects. You can point to your watch, you can point to a ring, you can ask them what they do with these things, and that way you can start to gauge whether they're having a hard time talking to you or just not understanding you at all. Last, but certainly not least, is the most important aspect of any stroke, time. There is nothing we can do alternatively for time other than trying to deduce when the stroke symptoms began by asking bystanders, family, or the patient themselves if they are conscious, alert, and oriented. Thanks for watching, guys. Hopefully this was helpful and you learned something. 
Be sure to like and subscribe if you liked this video. And if you really want to follow for more information, we do put out more EMS content fairly frequently. So keep your eyes peeled on that YouTube page. Thanks. Um...